to another episode of Broken Play. Man, we got Marcel in the building, got Reggie Ball, man. We delighted to have a guest in the building, man. The name speaks for itself. We don't even have to introduce him, but we will. Give it up for the one, the only, Kwame Brown in the building, man. What you been up to, man? Staying out of the way. Staying out of the way. Nah, you even staying out of the way. On the internet, I'm in the way. <laughs> in real life, I'm out the way. <laughs> nah, for real. So, man, like, uh, just uh, get a, get us, you know, kept up the catch, caught up to speed. Well, uh, I fucked that all up. It be like that. <laughs> Nigga trying to talk professional. <laughs> um, I guess like I I would want to know like you know. When, you know, people were saying shit and just doing shit, what made you find, like, hey, bro, this enough? Um, oh, um, my brother, he brought me a video of Steven Jackson and uh, Matt Barnes and Gilbert Arenas. They was talking crazy about me. And the crazy thing is, Steven Jackson, I know him. Like, mm -hmm. I used to hang out with him at his house, Tyrus Thomas and all the guys. We played together in oh, Charlotte. Oh, Tyrus, yeah. Yeah, so I'm mm -hmm. like, why would he get on TV and act a certain way? Yeah. And, when we in uh, real life, you treat me a different way. So I just couldn't respect him. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, you know, at this point, my son, who was 13 years old, I got custody of my son. Uh, and so he saw it at the same time. So I was like, you know what? Let me just say something. And so I reached out to him behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And then he went on Instagram. Yeah. Mm. So it just went from there. But no, you know, when you first start, I'm going to say this. Like, you show... A personality like where it was like we had to watch your videos like right. like bro this, this nigga funny as right. a yeah. like people probably never understood like you know what I'm saying when you giving your takes and stuff mm -hmm. and like to put everything in perspective like it ain't too many people that can say they played with Michael Jordan and uh, Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson damn I and, didn't even... and Steph yeah Tayshawn Prince Richard Hamilton so it's like Ben Wallace. Yeah. She Wallace. Like with with that being said, then you had to start just looking at, at everything and just putting everything in perspective. Like, even to do you feel like the pressure of like that you went number one? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if say for instance, a a person who may go in the second round, they don't have so much on their shoulders to have to prove this and prove that. You see what I'm saying? No, I behave like a second round pick. One thing I learned is that a number one draft pick can't say or can't do certain things. Um, I was down in Gainesville, uh, Florida, uh -huh. uh, and a guy, uh, me, I was with one of my friends, and a guy punched, punched him in the face, and then ultimately I got hit in the face over a chick. So I broke my hand. I broke my hand right before I got drafted. And uh, I guess when Michael Jordan drafted me, I was supposed to be traded for Elton Brand. Um, so they drafted me to do a sign and trade with Elton Brand. Um, Cause MJ don't play with rookies, but I broke my hand and they was trying to cover it up. Mm -hmm. So then David Stern called me into the office and he was like, "You can't do this, you can't do that." And I'm like, "My mama told me if somebody hit me, hit their ass back." Yeah, <laughs> he's like, what are you talking about? "You the number one draft pick, you can't do this, you can't go here." So he's trying to get me to understand that somehow just by me going to a certain place, that is my fault, and I just couldn't understand that. Damn. And that's what these guys go through. LeBron James, uh -huh. if somebody grab his wife on the booty, they're going to expect LeBron James to get out of the way and security to go do something. Me, I'm going to go do something. Yeah. And they try to train that out of you, and I just thought that was weird. Hey, what's up? It's your man, Richie Ball, coming at you with Prize Picks, where a single entry could be life-changing. And with the NBA going on each and every day, there's a chance for you to add more money to your bank. Now, look, it's super easy. Simply register, deposit, Select more or less on two to six players, stats like points, assists, rebounds, and potentially win up to 25 times your entry. Plus, if it's your first time on prize picks, they'll match your initial deposit up to $100. It's available in over 30 states. Head over to prize picks now and look, use the promo code Broken Play and tell them I sent you. So go right now and download prize picks today for your daily fantasy sports experience. Daily fantasy made easy. Mm. So, I, I, did that change the uh, your whole mindset knowing that for them to say Michael Jordan 
play with, want to play with rookies? No, nah, it, it didn't. I just wish the trade would have went through. But at that time, mm -hmm. uh, A. Poland had traded away uh, Ben Wallace. He traded away uh, um, who is they had Ben Wallace at the time, Rasheed Wallace, and then they had um, he went to he was a coach for Miami, light skinned pretty boy, Juwan Howard. Mm, okay. So they had traded away all of those guys, uh, and all of those guys turned out to be great players when they left. So A. Poland told him he wasn't going to trade me away. Mm. And you can't that. tell MJ, no, he owned the league. Okay. Mm. Damn. <clears throat> so look, we started off, when you started playing basketball, you played your whole life? <laughs> nah, I played football. For real? I played every Damn. sport, but I played football. With like DN, wide receiver? I played everything. I was linebacker. They just called me uh, body snatcher. Oh, shit. Skinniest thing out there, the body oh, you, like, you like to hit. Yeah. yeah, but they put me on offense, and I got hurt one time. First time on offense, they put me at tight end. Little dude, your height ended my career. Pow! That's, a, that's how we be, though. Yeah, it was that's how we be. <laughs> my mama say, boy, get off that field. You know you put me playing basketball. Because uh, from the sixth grade, I mean, from the eighth grade to the ninth grade, I grew eight inches. You like, I think I read something, you like six foot. Then yeah, you I was a six, six foot eight. guard, and then I entered in the uh, ninth grade at six eight. Damn. Yeah. So you... So look, tell me how, because we were talking about like that with Anthony Davis. So somebody who would play like, did that change though? Like, But I guess at an early age, it's easier for you to start developing into being a big man than for it to come like, you know, 12th grade, you going into college type. Well, no, I, I think I was a little bit ahead of my time because all through high school, I still play like a guard. I get the ball off the rim, I'm gone. Yeah. And so they let me do that until you got MJ on the team. Is You better get that ball to MJ. Get the fuck out the way. Yeah, in your dreams, in your sleep, <laughs> the whole game plan is wake up, give it to MJ. That's it. Yeah, and go get a rebound. Did you ever think about going to college? No, I was way ahead of my time. What, what was I going to go to college for? Oh, no, nah, no, nah, you did the right hurt? thing. But, uh, <laughs> we was just, you know, like some players, like before you, like say for instance, 10th grade, 11th grade, maybe mm -hmm. like you're not, you're not knowing if you'll go straight out of high school. Mm -hmm. So you you weren't even looking at colleges then. No, I was assigned to uh, seal deliver to go to the University of Florida by the 10th grade. I had already passed all my ACT tests, everything by the 10th grade. I was ready to go. But it wasn't until I went to a couple of tournaments and mm -hmm. I ran into Tyson Chandler and Eddie Curry. And I'm like, if they going to go number one, I just gave them the business. So I might as well throw my head in the uh, hat in the you know, bag. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. Ever. I'll say, um, speaking on that, like, there wasn't really many high school players drafted before y'all class. Like, mm -hmm. only two went each year in the heights being Darius Miles uh, the year before y'all. Mm -hmm. So can you speak on how your draft class changed the game with high schoolers, being y'all all were top five picks? It scared everybody until they realized the longevity uh, that they can get out of guys. Like, LeBron has been in the league, what, 20-plus years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, before they wanted to – push it to everybody that, oh, these guys are getting an opportunity to go to college, this, isn't that. But every McDonald's All-American that go on the college campus, the campus is getting millions of dollars for that. And so they're trying to train you out of getting what you're worth. So my draft class scared them. We had five, six guys in the – we had four guys in the top five or three guys in the top five, myself, Tyson Chandler, and Sagana Jop. You know, they're not they're not used to that. And then we had other guys that got drafted in that same uh, draft class. So you would have had a lot of high school players coming out. And back then under David Stern, they were still up under that old guard of you got to go earn it and prove yourself. Well, that doesn't work because you can look up Trajan Langdon in his career at Duke. He was one of the most accomplished college players, Christian Leitner, all these guys. Mm -hmm. There's no method to show you that just because you go to college, you're going to be a great NBA player. Yeah, because right. Christian Lightner, uh, he, and I'm glad you said that. What is uh, at North Carolina, Hansborough? Or what's Tyler, uh, Han Tyler Yeah, Hansburg. so it's like it's a lot of them who, you know, it don't matter. Greatest college player in the history. What do you do in the league? Who, Christian Lightner? Or hands, bro. He's one, he's Christian, one of, one of them. Christian, the Christian made an All Star team with the Hawks, but, but he didn't he, do much in the league at all. Right. So you can't measure thinking that just because a kid go to college. They're going to do so. I think they, they, they systematically uh, held high school players back. Look at Jermaine O'Neal. Um, look at LeBron James. Some of the top high school players, some of the best players in the league came out of high school. Kobe Bryant, Jermaine O'Neal. Uh, Tracy. Tracy. Jonathan Bender before he got hurt. Yeah, 2-4. Um, there was a lot of guys. Dwight came out. Yeah, Dwight. 
And then the guys that go to college for six months, that ain't teaching them nothing. Zion, all those guys, you're on the campus for five, six months. Yeah, and you know why I'm here. I'm here, <laughs> I'm here just because you made me. Yeah, I'm I'm, hey, soon as hey, soon as the season yeah. over, you ain't going to see me back on that campus. Yeah. Stop that, playing. That rule took place, what, 2005, the age rule? Mm, uh, uh, it got to be 19 to enter the draft? Well, they, they changed After it. After Dwight? Yeah, they changed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who were some players you grew up like... Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't say idolizing, but like, who were some like players you looked up to? Um, I like Magic, um, especially Magic because he played a style that I like. I was a big guy who dribbled the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, MJ. MJ did things nobody could do. Um, and uh, Isaiah. Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Okay. We we've had like a couple guys sitting sitting in the same seat you sat in and talk about MJ's like. Aura, like when he walks in, it's just he's just different. Like the room stops. Can you speak on that when you like you first met him? <laughs> I treated him like everybody else. I, <laughs> <laughs> I asked to play him one on one, and I, I got that game. But that's how I treated him. I just wanted to see him play. I was there for one reason. Yeah. But uh, MJ just like everybody else. He'll that, and I hate the whole celebrity concept thing because mm -hmm. he'll hurt for so many people's feelings by yeah, meeting him. Sure. Because he's gonna talk to you like a guy who know you, mm -hmm. and if you th believe in this celebrity construct, you're gonna be upset. Because that's just the way he is. Like when, well, explain that. He talk like a regular person. Like he will curse you out. He would like a regular. You would be like, "This MJ." He be saying he be giving out a lot of motherfuckers. A lot of you, ho, you a ho? ho yeah, a lot of ho. yeah. I'm ho. Saying, come here, <laughs> little bitch. <laughs> Typically, you ain't gonna cuss no stranger. out. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we know each other. We know we can talk to yeah, each other yeah. real hard. I can coach I'm you up real you hard. Saying, you know what I mean? But I'm saying, is that because y'all on the team? and you? It, yeah, if he, like, he ain't going to talk to you if you don't know you. But I'm just saying, if you're around him or no, yeah. then he just going to talk to you like a country dude. I mean, I'm just right. saying he's a southern country boy. So, you got any yeah. funny MJ stories? <laughs> Shit, I got two minutes. <laughs> I better leave MJ alone for they said Oak after me, though. <laughs> <laughs> when you first got that check, what you do with it? Bought my mama a house. That's real. That's nice. Yeah. So, nice. so look, when did mom dudes know, like, oh, my son going to the league? Ain't nobody know. For um, real? Nah. Like, even at your high school, they couldn't just tell, like, nah, everybody he, he gonna make crazy. It. That's the one thing I learned growing up. Don't tell a lot of people what you're thinking because mm -hmm. they call you crazy. Every nigga around me called me crazy. Mm. You ain't going to no NBA. Your uncle did this. Your, your cousin did that. You going to So, oh, that. it was a lot of hoopers in the family. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, it was a lot of that. Everybody telling you what they fears are. So I learned to say, I'm just going to be quiet and do me. Real. Yeah. That's real. Nah, for real. So look, we got the OG versus New G thing we be doing. So like, uh, <clears throat> who would you take, Jason Tatum or Larry Bird? Shit, Larry Bird. Larry Bird was like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. See, look, <laughs> I I miss I miss Larry Bird, but I um I'm seeing how dope he was like through watching Winning Time. Mm -hmm. And when I see that, I was like, oh damn. Yeah, only reason why I say that, if he could score the way he did with hand checking and all the things that they could do playing defense, mm -hmm. with this soft, let a guy move wherever he want, oh, my God, Larry Bird, average 40. Would have went crazy. Yeah. De'Aaron Fox or Darren Williams? Darren Fox. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this might, Joel Embiid or Akeem Olajuwon? Man. That motherfucker talking uh, to Africans. Akeem Olajuwon because of durability. He mm. can't shoot the three, but he going to be available every game, and you know what you're getting. Mm. You be putting thought into this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giannis or Tim Duncan? Oh, man. Damn. <laughs> That's tough. Oh, man. That's tough. Giannis or Tim Duncan? Damn, you had to give me what team, though. You just Yeah, Giannis got one style. He going to play anyway. You got to shoot free throws now. You got to shoot free throws. <laughs> they both about the same percentage. Well, yeah, you free know what? Shoot. You're right. Hey, come on now. You got <laughs> man, Yes. Man. Well, that's a tough one. That one. <laughs> hey. I'm going to just lean towards Tim just because of the championship. Right. I'm going to have to okay. go with Tim. 
LeBron or Mike? Mike. No second. No, no. second. <laughs> Mike's something different, boy. Different, I'm talking bro. about. He like a dog. You done fed some uh, some steak and you put gunpowder in it because he don't even like you and you on his team. For real. Yeah, he just want to win. I'm telling you. Hey, who do he like on that Wizards team? Nobody. <laughs> he ain't like nobody on the Bulls team either. Hey, so look, how was that? Okay, now that you say that, so you know Mike gonna be on the team. So like, I know you like, well, I'm finna play with Mike. Like, how was that first practice? Like, how what? Like, you learn you finna watch Mike play and go get the rebound. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> but for him that, to be great, others have to suffer. I'm, you know that's what it is. You know. But at life. that age, you would think he, it'll be different though. He was older then though. It don't matter. He still in his mind. He was still MJ. And even though he was thirty nine years old, even in LeBron's mind, he's still LeBron. And yeah. He's that's, not, yeah. Okay. You know? That's good mindset. That. I got a question. So, you know, what was MJ work ethic like? Like we hear all the stories, but you saw it up close and personal. Mm -hmm. Like just you know, give us. A glimpse of a uh, uh, a real you know account of what his work ethic was like. Uh, his thing was he was he was so disciplined at working out, but he wasn't disciplined in life. Like he would do everything we would do. We would hang out, we play cars all night, drink, chill. Yeah. But he would wake up at six o'clock in the morning. He's going to work out. He's going to be lifting. He's going to be running. And I think that was his competitive edge. Like no matter what I do, I'm gonna get up before you and go grind while you sleep. And if it, I think he needed uh, that release because where can MJ go? Right, he's not like a regular guy. He can't go to the mailbox without somebody bothering him. Mm -hmm. Can't sit down and have a nice steak dinner. So, uh, unfortunately, the trade off for being this celebrity thing is he can find peace in private parties and in the casino. Mm -hmm. It's the only place they're not gonna let you come bother somebody that's gambling their money. Yeah. So a lot of guys they find little habits that they get involved in because. Their success becomes their prison. Mm. 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 So, like, it, it's no myth. Like, he was gambling, gambling, like it. Everywhere we went, playing, uh, <laughs> in practice, I'm finna hit it for way down here. Uh, like, that joker, he he believe in himself. For sure. His mindset, <laughs> crap, for real. He believe it. I don't think it's a gambling problem. He just don't think he can lose. Yeah. Yeah. You saw this man flipping quarters. Yeah. On, security. on, that, on the <laughs> last game, dance. Right? Like, yeah. So like being around, do you think if you would have went to another team, would that would that hit, you know what I'm saying? Would have been a difference? Uh, of course, I was trying to go to New Jersey Nets, but the league is the way it is. They don't trade you uh, in the same division. They trade me to a team that had a guy just like MJ. So I would love to be able to run and be athletic with Jason Kidd. Mm. So you, you kind of wish you didn't go no more. Uh, not necessarily. I think everything happened for a reason. For a reason, yeah. yeah. It's full circle. The guy that they call the bus is here exposing the media. That they just some script reading guys. Mm -hmm. So speaking on what you just said, a guy just like MJ, what what similarities did you see in work ethic, in work ethic or off the court with Kobe and, and MJ? Off the court, they're totally different. Uh, Kobe is a more polished, disciplined MJ. Um, he took all the good parts of MJ and put it into one and left out the nightlife. Um, but Kobe, is a, he's the exact carbon copy for the way he approached the game. He's just a little socially awkward, or was a little socially awkward. Mm -hmm. um, MJ wasn't socially awkward. He can hang with it. That's what he do. He thrive off of being the alpha dog in the room, playing cards and you know, Talk talking shit. shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chilling and having everybody around. But... Kobe wasn't, he wasn't really like that. Yeah. yeah. He was strictly business. So like with, with, so, but Michael hang with y'all, Kobe like. Nah, Kobe, no. Nah. If we went, if we won, he might appear for a quick second, <laughs> but he ain't really hanging. He ain't really hanging. He, he couldn't, I mean, he didn't, I never seen somebody handle being a superstar the way I see MJ do. MJ rolled just like a regular person. Him, Oak, and one little white guy that used to be a taxi driver <laughs> called Georgie. Hmm. He he out here. You know, he finally started getting a few little securities here and there once he got married. But other than that, it was just MJ. He was moving on to love. Everybody loved MJ. Who some players that you grew up playing with that that you feel like they should have should have got a shot in the league? Like, you know how some like how you were just saying about your uncles and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. we all know people that we done grew up and saw watching that we like, 
we thought was like, damn, he was better than me or something like that. Like, it wasn't no player like that that you were playing against at the time? Nobody. You just knew. You know why? And the reason why I say that, because that's the excuse we like to tell people in the hood. Oh, he was better than this guy. No, he wasn't. Because you had to, you have to give up something and sacrifice to mm. get to where I got to. I didn't get to, to go be the cool guy and be at the party. I didn't get to shag my pants and act tough. I had to be in the gym. Mm -hmm. I had to be at work. I had to be disciplined. And so that's what separates a pro from a guy who's just good. Right. It's, it's, it's this close. Yeah. yeah. But you got to still do what it takes to get there. And if you don't do that, you can't play what it could have should have. True. When you say you be exposing the media, have anybody ever reached out to you like, bro, you tripping? Lil Duval, a couple people tried to get me out of Charlemagne. <laughs> Charlemagne is a well-connected guy. I can say that. He's connected to a lot of different shows. Uh -huh. And uh, the whole Charlemagne thing, I lost a few friends, I think, because he give out jobs in the black community. That's how gatekeeping works. They put together a few black people, like Charlemagne and a few people, and then mm. that way, Charlemagne gave me a job. So man, Kwame tripping. If I can reach out to him and pull his ear, if I can't, then they'll look the other way. Mm. Damn. Well, what I know you had said that, but after that, you just start like shit going at all they ass. Because I know they fake. <laughs> like. <laughs> A bunch of dudes that sit around and call themselves friends and they just try to sleep with each other, old lady. All of them try to outshine each other. You see what Rashad McCann said? So I can't be lying. He went on Anton Daniels and said the same thing I said. The NBA players going in the stand, they're getting your girl. You take your girl to the NBA game and they're sending the ball boy at them. And they'll dap you up and act like they're your friend right after that. <laughs> so I don't do all that sucker shit. Like I believe in, there's supposed to be a man code. If we supposed to be cool, then it, I can, you know, when you and your old lady having a rough patch, like we all have it. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm not gonna be that guy. Is that a new thing? Is that, is that, was that there in the beginning of your career? Mm -hmm. Damn, is they were it, doing that it, back then. Mm -hmm. So is it? Is it just wasn't no social media, huh? right? Mm -hmm. Is it becoming more popular? No, Dennis Rodman. There's a whole myth that Dennis Rodman almost shot himself in the truck with a shotgun because um, there used to be a rule that the families can fly with the NBA players, right? And then I, allegedly one of his teammates had sex with his wife. So that whole thing out on the West Coast last year, uh, allegedly that happened, uh, that's that's pretty fucking common. It's pretty common. These guys, they don't really, this is this is a competitive. What, Bob? It's a competitive well, sport. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a competitive situation. Um, all men are competitive. People in general are competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just what's going to happen. It ain't just Wiggins. No, I feel remember that. When, uh, Tony remember Parker when, uh, was smashing? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tony yes. Jason Parker. Richardson, yes. Steve Nash. Yes. Yeah, it ended old boy career from Indiana right. to the center. Right. Um, what's his name? Hibbert? Hibbert? Roy Hibbert. What happened? Damn. Uh, his teammate uh, that went to the Clippers. Uh, what's the one that broke his leg? Paul George. Paul George allegedly messed with his girl. And it, that ended his career. Bro, Allegedly. Nasty game out there. It's just a lot of women in the world, bro. Like, That's come a, on, man. Like, Please bro. say that shit again. And even That's... like me, sometimes people don't even be realize, like, if I, if, just like, bro, I don't even, I'm not even going to say much to your girl. Like, I don't even want, because mm -hmm. I'm not even thinking about talking to your girl, but I don't want your girl comfortable asking me what the fuck you doing. So it's, I don't even want to be. the girls they picking, though. Yeah. They send yeah, us man. as black players to the strip club and to the club to find a wife. And white boys going to the golf course in the fashion show. So mm -hmm. even if it do go bad, they got a person that's of a different class. She not going, some of them not going to put it out there in the media. They know how to separate. Mm -hmm. You might have to now give you me just boom, said boom, some boom. real shit. Then. Yeah. They know how to break up in the right way. And a lot of these guys, they don't know how. You taking all this money and you where the, where the dope boys and where everybody be at, mm -hmm. you fool. Bro, it don't need... You see how people break up who ain't got money get on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, my cousin, that old lady just broke they won't stop. <laughs> like, nigga, he told me he good. I keep seeing him post meme after meme. Bro, leave that shit alone, man. Come fuck the hoe. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I ain't even bring it up. <laughs> he keeps talking about it. But now I see what you saying, though. It's, it's like funny. how to break up. Like, it just be different. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how about, like, now you see more of these older women getting with these younger younger dudes. Mm -hmm. Like you see Drea and Jalen Green, now they saying like, 
she may be pregnant or something. She's like 39, he's like 21. Mm-mm-mm. I be feeling like, I be feeling like, <laughs> he said poacher. I be feeling like they play so much goddamn basketball, AAU tournaments, high school games. They don't have time to fuck. And then when they get. <laughs> no, you know, that ain't true. Hey, or that shit, is. how you lose your mind as soon as you get some pussy? Because they listen to a culture instead of listening to themselves. Like, mm-hmm. I knew how to talk to women, you know, before I got some money. A lot of these guys, they ain't never talked to a woman be- until they got money. And our culture say, go over here and get one. I know how to go to a coffee shop and sit there and talk or ignore a woman. And then before I leave, I'll get one. They'll come to me. But a lot of guys don't know how to do that. They go lead with money. And then you get what you get. And that's all they want from you. you and then some of them ain't got no personality too, though. Mm-hmm. That would be key. Not just the men, the women. Don't nobody like personality. Like, you don't, you can't hold a conversation. Yeah. But see, like, when you just say how you passed your ACT and all this at, at a certain grade, like, mm-hmm. you ain't no you ain't no dummy. Mm-mm. Like, not saying you could judge it by, by that, but it's like you could hold a conversation. You could talk like mm-hmm. people would think, Certain people don't go to college because they can't, or you know what I'm saying? Or they like you chose to go to the league, like shit. Economics told me. Yeah. That, you know. Let me go get this motherfucking <laughs> money. The yeah. fuck I'm gonna go to college for? Where'd yeah. that come from? Because you're very well read. Yeah. So uh-huh. so of course your mom, your uncle, your brother, somebody, somebody around you had to put you on, uh, mm-hmm. whether it's reading books, exposing you to documentaries or some shit. So where'd that come from? Uh, it came from my upbringing. Uh, most of my brothers sold drugs when I was a kid, so I saw. Uh, so I had interaction with the police early on. Okay. So they kicking in the door, they doing all these certain things. So then we went from having money and having cars and having all this after my mom got divorced from my father. But um, once my brothers went to prison, I'm like, dang, we real, we really fucked up now. Right. Uh-huh. So at this time, I'm 14 years old. So there was a 70 year old man. He told me the truth. He like, look. Don't nobody care or that you, you know, one of eight and you, your mama by herself raising your other kids and your other brothers in prison. What are you going to do about it? Well, that's all it takes, bro. Yeah. You can either, you know, go get a job or I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be men that come by acting like they want to help your mama, but they just want to sleep with your mama. So you can either go get a job and help out and be a man and not make excuses, or you can make excuses and be like everybody else and go to jail. So I, I got a job and ain't looked back ever since. Boy, that's some real shit, though. Yeah. But for somebody to break it down like that. Yeah. I'm glad I, I didn't meet the sensitive people. Like, that. what they do now is they tell kids they can't. Boy. If he would have told me I can't, Boy. then I wouldn't. And so he just told me the circumstance, told me two different paths that could happen, yeah. and I chose one. Because, like, we coddle people a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, this, in this generation, like, man, no, nah, that's... You know how it is. And Not you mean fuck. and... <laughs> Uh, uh, what's the other word uh, they use? Oh, he would have been toxic. They would call him toxic. toxic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's another one. It's one Man, more. Mr. Eddie, toxic. Misogynistic. Misogynistic. Yeah, oh, my that's, God. That's their go-to. So that shit right there, is, that's just truth. Yeah. So yeah. that 70-year-old man just gave you the truth. Yeah. You can make it right or make it left, bro. Yeah. It's on you. And but I, I, I guarantee you he left his hands off after that. Yeah. And then he, and look, he gave me a code of conduct. He said, look, I don't feel sorry for you. Right. I go to work at 5.30. We got to be there at 6. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what time I'm coming by. I'm going to ride by your house from 5 o'clock to 5.15, 5.30. If you're not out on that porch at 5 o'clock, I'm just going to roll by. And I was never late. I always made it to work. I was there at 5. Because, you know, construction, you got to be there early. Yeah. So I was up 5 a.m. every morning, 14 years old. What was his so name? That's what I say. It's a, it's a discipline, Mr. Mosey. It's a discipline that you got to have. I don't care what circumstance that you in. If they give a kid a code of conduct and give him a discipline routine that he can do every day to be successful, it'll happen. He was alive when you got to the league? Yeah. You set him straight? Yeah. Good deal. No, no, no. He didn't take nothing from him. Mr. Moe's a grown man. Damn. I'm oh, saying yeah, like bro. He you was know. already straight. He, this is a man who worked all his life. He had four or five houses, everything. And we ain't got too many like that no more, bro. Yeah, he yeah. no money. Real. He just wanted to see me do good. Yeah, that that like yeah. that did something for him. Yeah, my his thing was do do the same thing I'm doing for you to somebody else. Damn. Pass it forward. That's real. Shout out to Mr. Mosley. Yeah, so ever since I met him, I give people free game. I don't charge them nothing. Yeah. Ah, oh, that real. And you say you were growing up in Brunswick. Mm-hmm. That's what. People, uh, that's where that Brunswick stew come from. 
I think that's New Jersey. Man, man. nah, no. <laughs> I think that's it. No. Yeah, I think that's no. New Jersey. No. No, you my like, dog. but we call no. it, look, my grandma <laughs> stayed in the country. We call it Burma stew, though. You ever heard of Burma stew? I ain't heard of it. But you I ain't never heard that. of Burma stew? Uh, no. That's my dog, but no, I know they ain't coming. Man, Google that shit, Marcel. I promise you, brother. Brunswick, B R U N. Oh, I know. Just like the city. What's that, Brunswick stew? But then it'd be like Burma stew, bro. It's like they take. Oh, Burma stew? Yeah, but it's like, this is how I know it's a country. It's not no Jersey. There's a Brunswick stew. They take the hog. Where is it from? New Jersey? They do the hog head. Southern United States, place of origin. Oh, what's up? Main ingredients tomatoes, lima beans, corn, okra, vegetables, and meat. You might I apologize. Yeah, bro. Now. Oh, shit. I apologize. Now. Hey, you taught me something. Hey, I apologize hey. now. I, that Mr. Mosley spirit got in me. I'm like, let me get some free game, man. But now nah, it be like that for real. But now nah, shout out to him doing that for real though. So like that was basically with him doing that, that mm -hmm. that kept you from being sidetracked when it went on to playing ball and all that, huh? Yeah, I just thought I was going to jail like my brothers. Everybody else was going to jail. They they would they would have money, have cars, go to jail. So you seen it. that life cycle? Yeah. Seen them, so, yeah. So it wasn't until I saw the effects of what it did when you leave a woman alone to mm -hmm. when he gave me a different option because leaving her alone was a different situation. You're really not helping when you do that. What you mean? We all think we helping mama. A lot of guys say they selling drugs in the uh, whole frame of helping mama, but they get all that money back. They actually make it worse. When the feds came in, the GBI came in, they made it worse. They took everything that was associated with anything. Yeah. They even took things that ain't have nothing it to, do, have with to do with that. Right. Yeah, so they put you in a worse situation. So if all of those young boys, if that's the thing that the Mexicans do, if all of my brothers would have just got a job and brought that money back home and just was, was a team with that money at home and strategic with it, they would have never went to prison and we could have built with legal money. But we don't think like that. They tell us fast money is the way. When all that money come back, mm -hmm. are your brothers out now? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. So, which was that one of your brothers who had told you when? Uh, but he outside. I can't stand it. I'm for real. <laughs> yeah, they look alike. I see. <laughs> Don't do me like that. That motherfucker ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do me like that. <laughs> they like damn. Both of y'all ugly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but the fact that like you surprised me because you move militant though. <laughs> Like a <laughs> motherfucker. Top flight. Nah, I, I just, it just, it's just, it's not, a new territory. Not saying like militant, when I say you move militant, like you you don't come, like you ain't got a whole bunch of people with you, like you move like <laughs> with, like, you know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of people with a whole bunch of people and that don't mean nothing. Mm. You better have, I'd rather have real serious people and purpose driven people than right. uh, an entourage. Keep your brother like around you and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I got a question. Um, so, you after Washington, you got traded to the Lakers, mm -hmm. and that was, I believe, that was Phil's first year back. I think so. Um, you know, everybody always talks about Phil approach, and you know, mm -hmm. the whole Zen and uh, you know, divinity and everything he believes in. Basketball aside, did anything from Phil of that nature rub off on you and, or did you, you know, just observe or learn anything from who Phil was as a person? Uh, yeah. I mean, Phil was unapologetic. You know what I mean? I learned to, you know, stop all that saying sorry. Like a man is supposed to move. You know what I mean? <laughs> Phil don't say sorry. He moved purposeful. Um, he wasn't afraid to tell you how he felt, but he did it in a way that you could receive it. So it's all about how you package it, you know, Sometimes being from a certain area, I would come off as aggressive, but I learned you can say the same thing without saying it in a way that a person can't receive it. And and Phil was instrumental in that. And uh, he would always play with your mind. He would want you to go talk to a psychiatrist. I'm like, what the fuck I'm talking to them for? Like, and being from the hood, that you look at that as a bad thing. Um, but it actually was beneficial. It, it uh -huh. uh, lets you see that in certain areas you can grow, in certain areas you can just say it in a different way. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'm I'm asking for for personal growth myself because mm -hmm. I'm a trainer, help run a gym, affect mm -hmm. fitness, go see us. Uh, <laughs> That's what's up. Do you change? How often? When and do you? When do you change? When do you make that approach to where you change? You you say this a little different mm -hmm. as opposed to saying this. Man, I'm Kwame Brown. I know I don't mean no harm, but I'm gonna say this this way. And then there's the feel side of 
yeah, I'm Kwame Brown, but I know you ain't going to receive the Kwame way. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead, throw this curveball at you real quick. When do you decipher? Because right now, you know what I mean, you're pretty kind of unfiltered. Well, you, you're supposed to just say it how you say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Phil, Phil was weird. Like, he was unfiltered, right. too. Yeah. Right, right. Um, he just didn't curse like me. Like, if I'm engaging with a person, I know not to do what I do on YouTube. Gotcha. That's just, okay. that's just me doing that you. on YouTube. I got you. In real life, I'm going to treat, I'm going to be very respectful. Gotcha. Because if you're anything like me, then you know the other side of Absolutely. disrespect. Okay. So I'm going to lead with respect in hopes that I get it back. Because when men don't disrespect, uh, when men don't respect each other, it's a misunderstanding. That's shit, yeah, I got you. So yeah. when you when you go on your go into YouTube mode, mm -hmm. you like like how how do you just do the switch though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's a switch. Like bro. I grew up roasting, man. Like yeah. I always been bro, a big you, tall hey, black no, ugly dude. Bro, you know what I mean? you so, talk shit, man. I'm talking about when that hey, when you gotta get first, them niggas up off you. Yeah, but I'm talking about <laughs> it was the first series of YouTube. I'm like, hey, this motherfucker crazy, man. <laughs> But it was like, because for so long, you were just chilling. Yeah. Quiet. And I, I think that's what it was like. Boy, y'all done fuck with the wrong right. one. Y'all yeah. ain't going to be able to shit this motherfucker. So I got up, time boy. today. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want nothing that they like. Yeah. yeah. So it's a different value system. You know what I mean? So what I value is my independence. You know, they value getting a check from another man and then talking down on other, everybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't value that. You know what I mean? I value that. If uh, there's a situation where you want to call my boss, my phone going to ring. Hey, man. That's so, hard, boy. Talk that talk. Damn, yeah. that's hard. <laughs> I got to, um, so I feel like in NBA history, it's always going to be players like tied to one another mm -hmm. through trades. Like you got Luka and Trey. You got Kawhi and DeRozan. I feel like that trade between um, Memphis and the Lakers with you mm -hmm. and Powell doesn't get talked about enough. Like mm -hmm. that trade basically kind of made, Powell Hall of Famer, who he is today, and y'all also in the same draft class. Can you speak on that trade a little bit? Oh uh, shit! Shout out to Powell. He a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and, uh, shout out to my ninety thousand a month that I uh, every two weeks I gain on my check by going from L.A. to Memphis. Respect. Win win. You ran that shit. I don't want to be nowhere I'm not wanted. Yeah. And yeah, sure. you know when you move from L.A. to Memphis, you get an extra little bonus on your check because of the tax break. Oh, hell yeah. And I was hurt out in L.A. The only reason why I left, because I couldn't stay healthy. I rolled my ankle. I, I tore mm. my stuff up. So that summer, um, I got it. I was getting injections in my ankle and my shoulder, cortisone shots so much, I was I was urinating blood. So Damn. that's the side of things they don't tell you. Right. Every time they show you me playing, they show you me overweight. They show you me in L.A. They don't show you when I'm 260, 265, 270, can run and jump and move. They show you these things while I'm bandaged up. And I mean, that's a, that's the unfortunate side of being an athlete because mentally it's the pressure of performing, but the other side is you don't trust your body no more. And Ooh. that L.A. spotlight mentally is also taxing. Like, I played all day. my whole life. It's yeah. the same spotlight. It's just, yeah. it's, when you play with a superstar like Kobe and LeBron, you just got to get the uh, understanding that everything your fault. Because the, fan, <laughs> yeah, the fanfare and the love affair of LeBron and Kobe is not going to ever allow it to be their fault. So mm. you just got to know, just like Russell, uh, Russell Westbrook. Yeah, when he was in L.A., yeah. They act like he was terrible. Look what he's doing for the Clippers. Yeah, respect. So, I mean, they every time LeBron get a new teammate, you just look at which one going to get the blame. Because it's not going to be him. Right now, yeah. yes. It's not going to be him. It's going to... And back in the day, I come from the era that when you pay a guy $100 million, they take the blame. They didn't blame uh, the, a guy you brought in on a trade, pay him a couple million dollars. When you pay superstars to win. Mm -hmm. You don't pay superstars to score points. That's why the media don't know what they're doing. They're making everything about stats. When I played in high school, the core of the game, they used to tell us, once you lost the game, the coach that I had, he would never let us watch the stat sheet. He said, that stat sheet ain't going to tell you but one thing, you lost. Man. So why are you watching the stat sheet? Well, I feel like you done heard me. I, I was in this <laughs> No, I'm just saying, I hate that. I'm they make everything about yes, a stat bro, sheet. I was telling them, bro, them stats don't matter. Some of them, they get them stats at the end of the game, the game over. I want to tell, tell my kid, this motherfucker was a dog. He won. Right. Yeah. Fuck with them numbers saying. And that was sometimes we could pair players. Mm -hmm. That's what we get into. Yeah. He threw for this. Man, fuck what he threw for. He didn't win. That's why players are playing the way that they play. 
Yeah. They're playing a bunch of individual ball, trying to get numbers so that you can't say in the media it's their fault. Who were some of your your favorite teammates? When I say favorite teammate, we're like, man, nah, he was dope. He was a good ass teammate. Chris Whitney, Rasheed Wallace. Rasheed was one of the ones. Allen Ives. Man, I ain't never heard a bad AI story. Man, that boy there. <laughs> I got some, but nah, that's, <laughs> not that. that's hard. <laughs> I got in trouble for that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> when hey, not, rookies and young guys do not hang with uh, mega stars. It's gonna be your fault. Hey, no, what a, <laughs> it's gonna be well, your fault. When I say like no bad, when like everybody got good shit to say about him. Oh, man. he a real dude, man. Yeah, he, he real yeah. solid. Yeah, and you said Antonio make dice. Yeah. Hey, Dice one. Uh, he played. He started with the Nuggets, didn't he? He started with the Nuggets. I played with him in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. How? What's the best city you done played in, you think? Man, you done played in a lot of nigga cities, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, from, ain't from, mean to play. No, for real. Yeah. From what Detroit, standpoint? D.C.? I love D.C. Shit. I love Detroit. Yeah. But I love L.A., too. Yeah. But <laughs> from an overall, like, city, man, it's out of Detroit and L.A. For real? Yeah. They had you wearing the buffs and shit. <laughs> nah. Detroit, man. Nah, Detroit, Detroit almost was in the Super Bowl, man. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You had some point though? Yeah. Um, so you got to play uh in Golden State for a year. No, um, I got hurt. I tore my pectoral muscle. Games. I played like nine, yeah. Okay. But were you on the dollars. roster? You were on the roster for the whole year? Yeah. And that was Mark Jackson's first year. First year, yep. What were some of the things that you saw Mark Jackson plant into that team that made them, you know, grow into who they were? Everything. Mm. Um, Clay Thompson wouldn't have been Clay Thompson, in my opinion, without Mark Jackson. You Clay yeah, Clay Thompson couldn't hit a shot when he first started. If you look at it, they had Darrell Wright. Darrell Wright was playing. A safe bet would have been Mark Jackson when they wouldn't have looked at him at all in the wrong way for keeping Darrell Wright in the starting lineup. They had just paid him. Um, Clay Thompson is a rookie, and you don't have to play rookies. He moved Darrell Wright out of the lineup to play Clay Thompson, and when he was shooting terrible, he would always go in there and breathe life into him. Mm. That's instrumental to me in his early development. Because that usually don't happen in the No. NBA. A rookie don't get a chance to play. That used to be the old guard. And, and Mark Jackson is from that old school, but he gave this young fella grace and, and – the one thing about Mark is he could still do what he's asking you to do. So after practice, he was cooking them. Mm. He was in there cooking Word. them on three. Really? What? He was cooking. Nate Robinson, all of them. Nate Robinson was on that team too. Yeah. He was cooking them. I two seen Mark Jackson. Him. He would dribble a little bit and yeah. shoot, but I didn't know he was like. Two, three dribbles, he was still a monster. He couldn't go to the rim and do all that. But yeah, two, but three he still. Dribbles, he can give you what you want. Damn. What, what's your opinion on why he was let go? He was praying a lot. He was bringing in the Bible, and they don't seem Damn. to like that. Tim Tebow did that. Tim Tebow won with the Broncos. Of course, they hit it up under. They brought in um, uh, uh, Manny. Or hey, whatever. Manny, yeah. And that's cool, but you mean to tell me he can't get a backup job nowhere or he after can't, doing or what he we did. just can't keep him on the team? Can't keep him on the team as the yeah. backup quarterback so he can learn from Peyton Manny? Yeah. He would kneel down and pray after every touchdown, after everything he did. I don't want to see that. Man, I seen something they did on NBC. Who was that uh, Stroud when he was like, I want to thank oh, they, my Lord they and Jesus. Edit, they edited they cut it his interview. Yeah. So they cut his interview out. They cut that part off here, yeah. when they show up and start putting on social media. If he was twerking, they'd let it go. Well, you said some shit then. Yeah, uh, put on a dress. Boy. Yeah. Damn shame. Don't pray, though. Who some teammates you didn't fuck with? And when I say didn't fuck with. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> I think I probably do it. Nah, you did. Well, Phil. I mean, Phil. I'm saying like, man, what the fuck? Like, There's so many I can't yeah. name. <laughs> He'll get on YouTube and say it. Yeah, no, I'll yeah, be never back on again. <laughs> I'll be arguing all 2024 again. Man, I think the worst one, I, I would probably say, man, when you and Gilbert were going at it. No. Well, not man. going at it. You were going at him. Yeah. Shout out to Gil, man. He got the attention he wanted. He, he doing good with No Chill Gil Arena mm -hmm. uh, and uh, an underdog. So shout out to Gil. That yeah, was up. That was up, man. <laughs> who's who's the most underrated uh, player that you either play with or 
was in your era that you played against that you feel like doesn't get enough respect is like you know some of the uh the the higher you know regarded players Gennaro Pargo mm. Mm. Gonzaga yeah nice. yeah Cole hit his Every shout day. out his brother uh he yeah. just did a film yeah, yeah. uh yeah, Jeremy uh huh. Yeah. Jeremy Pargo, yeah. Yeah. I never seen somebody work that hard for uh just to be the last guy on the team to get cut. That's what people don't understand. Like that. Is he on that Lakers roster? Yeah, he yeah. got he got cut for me to get there, I think. Mm. Uh to make that trade happen. So just guys like that, I mean, when you when, when you say that story of, oh, this guy in the hood was better than this guy, when you hear about stories like Janelle Pargo, it's like, please don't say that. Mm. Cause that guy worked so hard only to be a part of a trade, you know what I mean? And he can go. You all know his body of work. When he mm-hmm. get in the game, he was instant buckets. Mm-hmm. But that's just the way of the league. If you don't, if you're not in that rotation or what they pushing, um, I don't believe in what people say that stars are born. I, I believe they're created. Um, if you saying the right things, I always say the wrong things. Charles Oakley say I get in my way, uh, get in my own way. And mm-hmm. I believe that because there's certain things I, I'm not willing to do. So you could admit that politics do play a, play a part in this. Oh, it's shit. Everything. everything. Black folks need to start doing politics every day, and on their off days, they need to study some more. Politics is the reason why you place wherever you place, the, re- the way you reason why you go to school, go to jail. Everything is politics. Because it was like if a player, if one of their players that they like grooming and liking, he say, "Oh, this my guy." Like, I, yeah. if he speak how I love you, yeah. then everybody else will start speaking. How like, I love if you. he from another country and he got a country behind him, and you just from the hood, and people really don't support you, they gonna go with that country. That's why Floyd Mayweather fought on Cinco de Mayo. It wasn't because he thought Mexican was the greatest <laughs> fighter. It's because we know it's gonna be a lot of drunk Mexicans want to see him lose. Mm-hmm. For De La Hoya, right? Yeah, he fought everybody. Every on fight, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, every really? fight. Man. Why do you think he made so much money? Bruh. Every fight. Yeah. They're going to fuck around your head, going to write a book. <laughs> I'm going to write a book. He's so. already writing it, for yeah. real. <laughs> but that's what it is. Like That's we, some real ass shit. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Damn. I ain't, well, I didn't even notice that like that. If Kobe I and Mike. said something wrong, everybody quiet. Oh, no, hell no. <laughs> We're astonished. Oh, you, yeah, <laughs> no, you said, because look, you think about all the Floyd fight, like, that nigga do fight they on feel. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> feel, yeah. I'm like, how the fuck I didn't realize that shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Everybody think, outside. They ain't got shit to do with him. No. Right. He know who he find again. Mm-hmm. He know they gonna sit down and watch. And he know they hate him. Yep. And he whoop their ass every time. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> he talk about that country. Fuck his leg. Yeah. <laughs> no more was, yeah. drunk on no Corona. Yeah. That's all it takes. Damn, man. Uh, quick question. Do you think it's easier or harder for those high school players to make that jump nowadays? It's easier because they prepare for it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they 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 have guys set in place. Um, and I got drafted to one of the oldest teams in the league, and it was so new. And anytime with anything new, there's gonna be some growing pain. So yeah. you go a uh, 19, 18, 19 year old guy where everybody else got wives and kids and family. And you chill. You know, I'm just running around bothering everybody. I'm like the puppy in there with grown yeah. grown ups and. Going to family after the yeah, that's true too. I'm trying to hang out, play video games. They're like, get the hell on. <laughs> and, and was it any veteran on that team that really like were pulling you to the side? Like Chris that? Whitney. After a while, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Because I was gonna say that probably could have helped, but then it's like, shit, you making more than? Nah, he taught me the game though. Like he yeah. he taught me. Chris Whitney taught me how to like be. Um, you are who you are. But and, and you seven foot tall, so you can't get away with it like me. But it's certain places that you go that this is gonna be the outcome. Mm-hmm. If you go to this places, you know what I mean. It's it's a different scenario. So I learned to go to certain different places. If Kobe and Mike played, like you know, if they was a, like a one on one game, who would mm-hmm. you go with? They'll be fighting for before they end the game. For real? Mm-hmm. Game would never finish. <laughs> Damn. Man, my dog dot net. He brought a. Uh, he got a. He got his clothing line. Goldie, yes, shout out to Goldie. And he and he this before you even. Nah, he been had this. This ain't no. Yeah, oh, he wanted to get that sign. Get yeah, in the market. <laughs> you want it on the number? Or? You, you put it on the number. Okay. Nah, so he been had that. That ain't. Look to you, brother. He got on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Hold on. 
That's the type of girl. <laughs> That's my yeah. type of player. I don't know everybody else. That's hard, bro. He on Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Nah, man, we ain't gonna hold you long. We appreciate you pushing up, talking to us. Yeah, like, I'm we about to say, y'all about to have to feed me in a minute. Oh! oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. We, Some we, more water, too? <laughs> 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 we, we, I start, you start squinting this shit out. Yeah. Yeah, like that time. Fast is fogging time. up. Nah, nah, we appreciate you pushing up, man. That's and then, like, just showing people, like, so, like, you know what I mean? A different perspective on you anyway. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of people, even. Before that, somebody might say for somebody just only would watch you on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like, man, this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. not knowing. They don't want to show me when I'm cursing somebody out. They yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, yeah. you sitting out here, you ain't. You probably said three cuss words the whole time. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's just levels to you and just, like just yeah. to show that and just. Shit, you could talk basketball without goddamn yeah. all that other shit. Yeah. That might now you might get a get a show picked up before our shit. <laughs> <laughs> you done came and fucked our shit. <laughs> like, hey, no, we can get that funny, man. Let me know when you want me to come back, man. I like this. <laughs> you wanna come back? Yeah, man. Let well, me know. <laughs> <laughs>